Isaiah 10:27 we already talked about I just want to remind you it shall come to pass in the day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil it says right so we are say we were doing when the anointing comes upon yourself so the anointing is a, a burden removing yoke destroying the power of god so in that we are talking uh, many areas uh, we are dealing with and um, what are the things the anointing can do for our life already we have discussed here it says plainly the scripture says anointing is the burden removing and yoke destroying power of god okay today we are going to see another area the anointing bestows favor from man and from god so the anointing can bring a uh, favor from man as well as from god and uh, we are, we are going to read a few scriptures here luke chapter 2 verse 52 and jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with god and men hmm so in the life of jesus it says and jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in the favor with god and men so uh if jesus can receive favor from man and from god we also can receive favor from god as well as from men amen i have turned with me one more scripture proverbs chapter 12 verse 2 a good man obtains favor from the lord but a wicked man of wicked intentions he will condemn a good man obtains favor from the lord but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn a good man obtains favor from the lord so uh, what we are discussing here what the anointing can do for us right so the anointing can produce favor so what is favor really uh, we are going to see uh, when you talk about the favor it's very interesting uh, uh, according to the word of god now we can see uh, one of the scriptures says if we are uh, doing the right thing in the sight of god we will receive favor from man as well as from god god always look into our heart and uh, if we need favor only thing it has to come from god once we need comes from god it also can come from men god opens the door in such a way so we are going to see a uh, few areas uh, how the favor works in our life first of all favor produces confidence favor produces confidence psalm 89 psalm 89 verses 16 and 17 there moses in your name they rejoice all day long and in your righteousness they are exalted in your name they rejoice all day long and in your righteousness they are exalted in your name they rejoice all day long and in your righteousness they are exalted for you are the glory of their strength and in your favor our horn is exalted right and uh, so the psalm is says we can see in the life of moses he is the one who writing that when you really think about their life uh, whatever you do wherever you go you will have a great confidence because you trust in the lord and the favor of god works in your life so in other words actually when you learn to spend time in the presence of god you are uh, you will be filled with the anointing of god once when the anointing comes automatically the anointing opens a door for you to receive favor hey sami say in your name they rejoice all day long and in your righteousness they are exalted for you are the glory of their strength 
you are the glory of their strength in other word when the strength of god comes upon your life you are strong right once when you are strong you will have a confidence in yourself and also confidence in every area where you are involved number 1 number 2 uh, favor produces supernatural increase and promotions favor produces supernatural increase and promotions genesis chapter 39 verses 21 to 23 But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Mm. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him and whatever he did the Lord made it prosper. See? But the Lord was with Joseph showed him mercy and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison first of all once when you receive favor from the person who is in charge that mean you are uh blessed by god and also you for you everything will be open even though there are so many restrictions are there in the prison but when you get the favor from the head you are free right you guess what he said and the keeper of the prison committed to joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison whatever they did there it was his doing the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under joseph's authority because the lord was with him and whatever he did the lord made it prosper imagine you are in the prison you are a prisoner prisoner is like almost like a slave you are not free you are not you can't do anything right but because joseph had the fear of god in his life you can see there in his life always he received favor from god the sight of in the sight of god he was right therefore he received favor from god when he received favor from god he also made the open door for the uh, i mean uh, to receive favor from the people's eye think about the criminals are put into prison but if you are given in charge or if you are given authority inside the prison that mean there is something right a slave coming to be in charge uh in other word all the other persons are there but he is uh got the higher position right so here always the promotion now the problem now we may be in any capacity in our own life working place office wherever we are right but if we if our ways are right before god if we have the fear of god if we have the anointing of god upon ourselves what happens is uh we will receive favor from god as well as favor from people but there are a whole lot of people uh in the body of christ this is a uh, uh complaint all the time we get our company they never give promotion especially i don't know why they are not giving to me the promotion <laughs> have you heard that type of story i am working longer than the other people but yesterday they came and today they are promoted sometimes we can receive all the complaints like that but the promotion come from not from the east or west the bible say promotion comes from the god even in my personal life uh, i experienced you know when when i was in australia uh when i went to the bible college only afternoon job uh, we get morning bible school and afternoon job afternoon job you don't get a good job always odd jobs you get it i got a job at the uh, bake house to clean the floor right nearly about 3 or 4 months i was working as a laborer and then after that i got a promotion to i became a cleaning supervisor <laughs> right and then 
I think a couple of weeks, I can't remember exactly, uh, within a few weeks time, uh, I went and spoke to the manager because I want to spend uh, kids here, time with my kids in the daytime. So I asked him a night job. He said, yes, Manuel, I can offer, I can give you a night job. He asked me to, uh, you know, bake uh, in the night, they all do all the packings, all the food items. So he asked me to uh, train myself in, uh, they have three section, bread section, pie section, and the cake section. So I was, uh, I was learning all the names of the items, and then I was packing with the other packers, and then I learned one week nearly six days. Following week, the manager came and asked me, Manuel, can you manage? According to our culture, our country, when somebody uh, go to learn something, when they ask, can you manage? We say, yeah, I said, yeah, I can manage. He was a retired police officer, the manager. He said, are you sure you can manage? I said, yeah, I can manage. I was thinking in my head, I was thinking only about the packing. Yeah, I learned the names, I can pack it, I can work. And third time he was asking forcefully, are you sure you can manage? I said, yes, sir, I can manage. He said, okay, from today, you are in charge of the packing here, everything, big house. He's the manager and I was the assistant manager. From cleaning position, I became a cleaning supervisor and then I became an assistant manager. In the meantime, we both prayed. When I was cleaning the floor, first time I working after school, and then uh, my, you know, my hands got so rough. Even I was telling my wife, when we go to Sri Lanka, we can't give a handshake to anybody because so tough, so rough in my, my hands are. Think about it. Then we prayed, Lord, we need increase uh, on our finances. We need a uh, favor and then start. So this came like, you know, uh, almost like overnight, the promotion comes. Once when you, once your ways are right before God, once when you are anointed of God, automatically the increase comes, promotion comes. What happens is we don't do what we are supposed to do. We try everything else in order to get the promotion or increase in our life. But God is the one to give you. Amen. So favor always produces promotions and increase, supernatural increase, you can call it. Okay. And then next one, the favor produces uh, restoration. Favor produces restoration. Exodus chapter 3 verse 21. And yeah. I will give his this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians mm. and it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty handed. Hmm. Think about that. Here God is saying here, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty handed, which means actually these people of Israel are slaves. Slaves, they don't get salary. They don't get wages. They don't get uh, anything. Uh, they can't have anything. They work. Sometimes even for food, they have to, they have to wait. You know, they are, they are not free at all for anything to receive. Oh, they were working for Pharaoh years, uh, year after year, year after year, year after year, without any of these things. Right? If they get any uh, salary, it's a uh, big thing. But they are not getting anything. So uh, the Bible says, the Lord says, when you go, you are not going to go empty handed. All these years you work for Pharaoh, you are not going to, when you leave the country, you are not going empty handed. I will give favor from the Egyptians. And then we can see the rest of the story. When they left the land, all the gold, all the jewelry, whatever they had the world, they blessed them. Uh, uh, and then they went. And I was thinking for a while when I was meditating on the word. You know, when Moses was uh, on the mountain, 
talking to God 40 days and 40 nights. These fellows, they started making a, a, a car out of the uh, gold. Think about how much gold they must have brought in. <laughs> right? How much gold they must have brought in the hand uh, from Egypt. And, all the, and also in the wilderness, God is asking them to uh, build the tabernacle. And all the things of whatever God is demanding, these people are having in the hand. That means they brought a great wealth from the Egyptian. Whatever they worked for, uh, they didn't work. Uh, they worked, but they didn't get anything for year after year. Years, years. For many years, they didn't receive anything because they were slaves. But when they left the land, God is saying, you're not going to go empty-handed. In other words, the same God is today even. He's the same God. Sometimes we may have lost in the past, we may have, uh, you know, lost in many different ways, but God can restore everything, whatever we have lost. It. Amen? Yeah. God will restore everything. Uh, when, when I say everything, financial, financially, whatever you have lost in the past, God can restore. It. Amen? Satan is a thief. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, he is a thief. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. Many of our blessings Satan has stolen. First of all, finances. Think about your past. How much money you have lost uh, because of certain reason. Sometimes there's no reason you lost money. You give to people, you never receive back. There are so many ways Satan steal. How about your health? Satan has stolen your health. Right? And the peace from the family. How many, uh, how many uh, times you lost the peace in the family? And what is the situation now? Think about every area of your life, whether you are perfect or whether you got everything. But here God is saying, everything, whatever you lost in the past, you are going to restore. He's going to restore everything because of the favor of God working in your life. Amen. When the favor comes, everything will be restored. Right? Our God is a God of restoration. And the next area, favor produces honor in the midst of your adversities. Favor produces honor in the midst of adversities. Every struggle, every pain, every uh, problem you may go through. But in the midst of all the troubles, God can bring favor. Uh, because God give, given you favor, you will receive honor. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 11 verse 3. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Hmm. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Think about it. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Think about it. Moses was a son of a slave in the beginning, before birth. And then, by the grace of God, he was brought up by the Pharaoh's daughter. He was raised up in the king's palace. And then, once when he killed an Egyptian, the news spread, and then he ran away from Egypt. He left Egypt. For 40 years. And then he came back again. Uh, by the instruction of God. God said go to Egypt. And redeem my people and bring it back. Right. So Moses going. Now. He was 80 years old. When he came to Egypt. And then. He was challenging Pharaoh. So we can see. God was using him in such a way because the hand of God was upon Moses. So he was, uh, here it clearly says, uh, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptian. Right? That's one side. 
Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, which means even though he was a slave boy, once when he came back again, he was not great at all anyway. He was fighting for the slaves. The way God used him in such a way, he was great because Pharaoh couldn't handle him. Even the people of main leaders couldn't handle him. Nobody can touch him. Nobody can challenge him in any way. Because the hand of God was upon him. He was great. There in Egypt. If he's great in the wilderness, great. If he's great in the in Canaan, the land of Canaan, it's great. But he was great in Egypt. In a way you can say, he was great in the enemy's territory. Why? Because of favor of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So you may be a slave. You may go through all the struggle. You may go through all the pain. Or whatever it is. Any adversity. But if God has a plan and a purpose for your life. If you surrender yourself to his will. He will receive honor in any place. Right? It is not necessarily you have to be born in the king's palace. It is not necessary that you have to be uh, educated. It is not necessary you must have so much money. It is not necessary at all. Only we need favor from God. Amen. The other area, favor produces uh, increase in assets. Think about that. We always struggle to buy a house. We always struggle to buy a land. We always struggle to get some, especially in the, uh, we can call it in the real estate. You will be able to receive increase because of God's favor upon your life. The Bible says, uh, actually, uh, God gave the promise to people of Israel, you will occupy the land which is not yours. You will live in a house which is not yours, which you are not building. You will enjoy all the fruits of the land which you are not planted. Think about for a while. Right? That is the favor of the Lord. Right? Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 23. This is happening before the death of Moses. And he was dividing the land. Deuteronomy 33, 23. And of Naphtali he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, mm. possess the west and the south. And of Naphtali he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of the blessings of the Lord. Full of the blessings of the Lord. Possesses the west and the south, which is uh, the land. Okay. Once when you receive favor from God, God will open doors for you to uh, enjoy special uh, wealth, especially in the area of real estate. Sometimes we always think that we have to work hard and we have to buy. We have to work, we have to collect money, we have to struggle, we, 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 everything we try to put on our shoulder, take the burden and try to do with our own strength. But here is the key. Once when you are anointed, the anointing receive, uh, brings favor. When the favor comes, automatically, even though you are not born, uh, some, uh, even when the anointing comes, the lands will be given to you freely. Think about that way. Always think. The creator of the universe is on your side. He can speak to people's heart. He can open doors for you to get lands wherever you want. As long as you are the child of God, you are an heir of God. An heir can occupy wherever he wants. What happens is, we, uh, even this morning I was telling, sharing with the people, what we do, we try to live a religious life, not spiritual life. 
Yeah, as long as we live a religious life, that will keep us just like other people, ordinary people. When you learn to live a spiritual life, we become the supernatural people. Always there will be a difference for the spiritual life from the religious people. So, spiritual people always receive favor. Religious people never receive favor. So, only thing you have to build up your life spiritually. Once when you learn to spend time in the presence of God, once when you are anointed of God, the favor automatically comes for you. When the favor comes, whatever the Bible says, Mark 11, 23, what does it say? 24. Whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you will receive them and you will have them. That's the key. It is your desire. Once when you pray, especially if you learn to, now one of the areas I learned, when we go to pray, most of the time what we do, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Right? How many times we ask the Lord, Lord, I want you more than anything. That will bring the door for us to. That will open the door. Right? Lord, I need more of you. I need you, Lord. I want to see your face. That desire, when that comes, you will automatically sit in his presence, longing, longing for him. Then God sees your heart. How much you are longing for him? Once when that happens, you are automatically full of the Holy Spirit. On the, when you are full of the Holy Spirit, the anointing, you are filled with the anointing. When the anointing comes upon you, automatically the favor of God comes upon you. When the favor comes, all these things are come upon you. Wealth will come, supernatural wealth, lands, property, whatever you wanted, whatever you desire, it will come to pass. Recently, I was listening to one of the messages uh, Pastor Chris was sharing. I was so uh, happy to hear that. He said, there was a time in my ministry beginning, in the beginning, Whatever I desire, I like, I pray. By the grace of God, I'll get it. I do all the time. God was faithful to answer my prayer every time. Now, he has grown up in the Lord and he's so anointed of God. He was spending more time in the presence of God. He says, now I don't ask anything. Whatever I desire, the next day it's there. And he said, recently, and this sermon was preached some time ago. He said, recently, while he was uh, going on the street, uh, I mean, in a car, he saw a beautiful car was passing him. He got a desire. He didn't ask. He said, I didn't ask the Lord. But I had a, I really liked that car. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't talk to anybody. Even I didn't talk to God about the car. Only thing, I liked the car. He said, next day, the car was there. He said, so he said, I was shocked and I was amazed how God loves me so much. Only thing, I like the car. The car was brought to me next day. Maybe the similar car or maybe the same car, I don't know. But he said, say, uh, the car, what I liked it, it is there, it came to me. What I'm trying to say, when you receive favor, God will speak to people. God will open the door, right? So, uh, so what we do actually, you have to uh, think seriously. Everything is available in the sight of God. As long as we have the favor of God working on our side. The next area, favor produces recognition even when you seem to be the least like uh, receive it. Right? Favor produces recognition. Sometimes 
we are not recognized by anybody we think we are least we nobody notice of us nobody take notice of us this and that we always think low about ourselves we may be in reality but when the favor of god comes the recognition will come automatically amen we don't think about that when you are recognized by somebody that means you are on the top right turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16 verses 13 and 21 to 22 Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers mm. and the spirit of the Lord came upon David mm. from that day forward so Samuel arose and went to Ramah Okay now 21 So David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer then Saul sent to Jesse saying please let David stand before me for he has found favor in my sight see in other words David was a shepherd boy even in the family all the other brothers are gone but he was there taking care of the sheep not he was not noticed by anybody he was just taking care of the but when the right time came the lords because uh king Saul was playing hell and then god the bible says god pushed him out of the kingship from the rulership so god said uh it was grievous for god thinking about Saul and then uh, we can see the lord spoke to Samuel the prophet to anoint David as a king. I like the way the wording says verse 13. Verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Rama. You see, the Samuel took the horn of oil which is and anointed him in the midst of his brothers right now Saul was put aside now Samuel the prophet want to anoint a boy from Jesse's family and we can see the if you read the context it says uh, Jesse the father is bringing all the uh, six sons the elder son leaving David aside and he brought uh, he was looking to actually uh, Jesse was really looking to uh, height stature figure he may be thinking oh he was a he brought Bible say he brought the eldest son Samuel said no actually God said he's not the boy second son he brought he said no he's not the right one third and fourth and up to six all the sons those who are capable to sit on the throne they have the physical body to sit in the throne Jesse thought that way but God said to Samuel you are look don't look at the face look only the heart and we I, I was thinking and Samuel was asking Jesse is there any other son which means David was not there he was not counted he was not recognized that he can become a king but his heart was right we can see in his story from the beginning itself when he was young he used to take the instruments and play music and also sing praises to God how many songs he has written he's a worship he's a man of worship he worship God all the time when a person learn to worship God all the time he is full of the Holy Spirit anointing of God will fill his life all the time so all the other brothers Bible doesn't say anything about them only about their physical uh, appearance only they were talking about but only uh, David he gave praises and worship to God that thing brought the anointing upon his life so that's a key for our life 
just like but he was not recognized by the family but he was recognized by god when the recognition comes what happens say look at this uh so he was recognized by god uh even though you are not physically capable right but when you have, what what i'm trying to say here if you are spiritually right you will get the recognition what happens is he he was brought to king's palace and the king says let him stand for me because he got the favor from my eyes which means when our ways are right before god when we are anointed of god when the anointing comes upon our life favor comes upon our life right when the favor comes you will receive not only from god you also will receive favor from people here david even though he was counted very least in the family he was not recognized but he was recognized by the king because of god's favor i mean so the, the same thing we can happen there we are maybe from the workplace or maybe office maybe the company where we week we are working wherever we are at the moment you may be least in the place but if you learn to fill with the power of the holy spirit if you learn to spend time in the presence of god you will be recognized by the high authority even sometimes in the king in the country right favor can bring anywhere favor produces great victory right in the midst of great impossibilities favor produces great victories in the midst of great impossibilities and we can see if you go to Joshua chapter 11 and uh, Uh, Moses was there and then Joshua is the captain of the army and uh, he one time I was if you I don't have time to go through the detail there are so many uh, bible say uh, the enemies came just like uh, you know uh, hundreds and millions like so many countries together came against him but the bible say because Joshua had favor from God he got the great victory the Lord fought for them now we may be thinking this is impossible in our own life the challenges the problem the difficulty uh, even some battles sometimes we in naturally we may be thinking oh this is impossible it cannot be done how many times we have given up our hope how many times we have faced the challenges and lost but here god says once when you receive favor from god any battles can be won yeah why god is on your side now yesterday our uh, not yesterday friday our youths were singing a song uh, what is that song in english <laughs> i was really immediately i want to correct but i didn't uh, something else came up in i forgot to tell they were singing a song uh, nothing is impossible with god what happens is we christians we learn how god will fight for we always go through the old testament see the uh, things happen and then we put ourselves there right under the old covenant the lord fought all the battles for his people now we are under the new covenant god won't fight for us we have to fight for victory right in other words actually when we will say under the old covenant they didn't have the name of jesus they didn't have the power of the holy spirit in instead of them they did not have authority they did not have the blood of jesus they were not 
call the children of God. So, under the old covenant, because of the covenant God made with them, every time when the enemies came against their people, the Lord fought for them. And God brought great victory. But under the new covenant, now uh, the same power God has given us to use, he has given the authority and the power. Today, uh, we have the weapons of the warfare, right? Today we have the name of Jesus. Today we have the blood of Jesus. Today we have all the uh, necessary thing. God has equipped his body with power and authority. So the same enemy when they come, we don't need to Lord cry, Lord help me, help me, help me. When we use our authority today, God's power works through us and brings the victory. That's just the key. If you cry to God, Lord, cast out the devil, he won't cast out the devil. You cast out the devil and his power will work through you. You are anointed of God. Amen. You are anointed of God. So, here we can see uh, what are the challenges you may be having. What are the enemy you may be facing. Whatever the war you may be having right now, struggle, battle, whatever you call it. If you learn to spend time in the presence of God, the anointing will come upon you. When the anointing comes, automatically the favor comes. When the favor comes, what happens? You will get the victory, whatever it is. Right? You don't need your ability. You don't need your talent. You don't need anything, whatever necessary, but God will bring the victory. Amen? Because when God works on on behalf of you, nobody can stand. You may be seems to be, uh, it may be seems to be like very, it's impossible. God will make it possible. Amen? Because of the favor of God working in your life. The other area, favor produces prominence and preferential treatment. Right? Which means, wherever you go, when the favor of God is upon your life, you will get the uh, honored place in other words you will put it to a honored place you will be in the higher place you will be really uh, you will you will be given preference in any wherever you go whatever you do everything the doors will be open because of the favor of God we can see Esther's life that happened if you read the book of Esther especially chapter 2 verse 17 uh the Bible says she received favor and the preeminence uh, God has given Esther in the sight of King Agashuel, right? So uh, we are not, we don't need to really, uh, the Bible when you read it, there are so many girls, virgins were there, they are uh, king was trying to select a uh, queen for because uh, uh, Queen Vasti, she's, she uh, made a wrong decision. So according to the, the counselors, the king pushed her aside. So he wanted to uh, get a, king, a queen. So Esther got the opportunity. So God, because of God's favor works in our life. The other area we can see, Favor produces petitions and granted even by ungodly civil authorities. Listen carefully, I'm reading. Favor produces petitions granted even by ungodly civil authorities. That's what happens exactly to uh, Queen Esther. Right? If you read Esther chapter 5, verse 8, uh, here, Aman, one of the main man under king uh, king's palace he made a tricky game against Jewish people to destroy everybody but because of Esther she received favor from God because she was in the king's palace she went before king she made a petition on the behalf of Jewish people. 
right? Uh, just to cut down the story short, king gave the uh, king gave the answer for her in her favor. Ammon was put to death, and entire Jewish people were protected because of her petition. Right? Same thing even today. Wherever we go, even especially when you go to prayer, God answers your prayer. Because you have the favor of God upon your life. Right? And also, even from uh, the inter the king was not a godly man. He was an ungodly man. In order to receive favor for God's people, God can use anybody. Even today is the same condition. Even in our, if I take our country, our nation, our situation, there are ungodly men are ru ruling in the country. But if you need favor, if you need favor, only key the anointing, the presence of God. Okay. So sometimes you may be thinking, oh, these are ungodly people. How can I get it? Favor brings all those things. Answer. I'm out of time. So let's pray and ask God's blessing upon our life. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, Father. Praise you, Master. Heavenly Father, once again come to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father God, your word says, when your words goes out, never return a word. It will accomplish the purpose of whatever you sent forth, the Father. Even this morning, we thank you that you have promised us that we can receive favor from your eyes, Father, as well as favor from people's eyes. In the congregation, whoever need favor upon their life, in any area, I pray, according to today's word, as long as they spend time in your presence, as long as they are full of the Holy Spirit, as long as they are anointed, the anointing will bring favor. When the favor shows up, we know every door will be open. What are the area they may be asking you, Lord? I pray that they will receive favor just like Queen Esther. Just like the Jewish people. I pray this congregation will receive favor wherever they go. Favor whatever they do. Favor. Let the doors will be open for them that they will enjoy. Let the favor bring victory, uncommon victory into their life. I pray the favor will bring every blessing. Even Father God, I pray the assets will be increased in their life. Wealth will be coming to their life because of your favor working in their life, oh Father God. I pray that your presence will go with them, that they will enjoy your presence continually this week. When they come up, let them come with a good report and good testimony. We give you all the praise and glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Thank you, Father. God bless you.